Hi, it's Philip Withernet from FashionSquare.com at the Clarion Hotel Soho. Hailing from Sydney, this journalist has been on the fashion forefront on a global scale for the past 20 years. You name an Australian publication and she's probably written for it, as well as editing a few of her own. She's the frock writer that packs a punch and isn't afraid to tell it like it is. Today we're getting squared with the ever stylish Patty Huntington. Hi Patty, how are you today? Very happy to be back in Adelaide, or oh. Radelaide as I've learned to call it. Good old Radelaide. <laughs> well, you do travel up, you're always on the go. Every fashion week and every fashion festival, does the job ever tire you out? It does, especially when you're blogging through the night and trying to get photos up and load photo galleries and uh, if you're dealing with a, a time difference and you're the, on the other side of the world, yes, absolutely. But, you know, we do it because we love it, so there you go. You must come up against a lot of personalities, a lot of big, creative personalities <laughs> out there. Tell me, have you ever come up, come against a big ego and come to blows with anyone? Uh, several people, in fact. So, I mean, if um, I often say that if there's a, um, a lunatic in a five kilometre radius, uh, they will gravitate towards me. So uh, on, on several occasions, I'm sure they will take exception to me using that term liberally, but on several occasions, I, there seem to be sort of some people with just sort of extraordinary egos as well who, uh, who just can't tolerate any, the slightest bit of criticism. Uh, and look, I guess one of the best known examples of, uh, of my confrontation with one of those was Kelly Catrone, the um, New York publicist, who didn't like some, 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 some comments that she'd made to me and so much to some other people at a, a fashion show in New York. Sort of, she didn't like seeing them repeated in the Sydney Morning Herald and then banned me from all of her shows for the rest of my life. <laughs> anyway. Well, you are out there and you are travelling the world and you're seeing a lot. So I think justly you could maybe judge who the real trendsetters are out there, especially on the Australian platform, who would you say are our leading designers at the moment? Well, look, in terms of designers uh, and buzz factor, I mean, you sort of can't go past the Dion Lee at the moment. I mean, he's done three shows at Australian Fashion Week. They've all sort of garnered, you know, international sort of attention and buzz. Uh, look, there's a number of other great designers, Josh Goot also, I mean, Tony Metasewski, uh, you know, you've got Sasson By, Alice McCall. I mean, there's, there's really no shortage of great designers, uh, what there is a shortage of is sort of, I guess, business acumen and money to invest in businesses, and hence we've seen Sass and Bide sell recently, Willow sold recently. But in terms of trendsetters, I mean, let's not forget also um, stylists such as Christine Centenero, who works for Harper's Bazaar, I believe she's an Adelaide girl, is that right? Yep, that's right. Uh, there you go. And, I mean, you know, she's now consulted, well, she consulted to Kanye West for his fashion line, which actually I think was, was rather rudely, <laughs> you know, it, it, it was panned sort of widely. But, you know, I mean, they love the styling, actually. So that's, um, you know, you know, that, that's great for Christine. No, but, I mean, she, she's got sort of like a cult following online for her style and stuff. And, uh, you know, more than any Australian um, magazine editor. I mean, you know, there, there are sort of pages of street style of Kirsty Clements or Edwina McCann, but there are Christine Centenera. So I think, you know, I think we kind of punch above our weight in, in some ways. I'm trying to think of an Adelaide designer. It's just, just, just to refresh my memory. Well, we've always, well, come on, the, the fathers of Australian fashion. We've got George and Harry. That's right. No, I mean, you know, in terms of classic designers. Yeah. You know, I've actually got a fabulous um, code by then that people always ask me uh, where it's from and I say it's from um, George Brooke and Harry Who. So, yeah, no, I mean, there's great designers everywhere. I mean, it's, it's a tough gig sort of getting your brand sort of, you know, known around the world. And, uh, I mean, even Dion Lee hasn't shown outside Australia. But I, I tend to think that you don't necessarily need to show outside Australia these days. If you have a great show here and it gets lots of attention, then that's sort of enough to work sort of the appetite of retailers and things. That's right. So let's talk about... A strap rose about Australian Fashion Week, which is soon to become Mercedes Benz Fashion Week again. I'm Australia, yes, Mercedes Benz, Smith Mercedes Benz Fashion Week, Australia. Australia, that's right. <laughs> so let's just talk about the Australian Fashion Week here. You haven't been backwards and coming forwards with your reviews, they're brutally honest, and everyone has kind of mentioned a slight decline in Fashion Week in general. What is your take on that situation as far as our Australian Fashion Weeks have gone over the past five years? Well, look, you know, I think Australian Fashion Week is a very important event. I mean, every Fashion Week everywhere, you know, it, 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 well, certainly in the emerging sort of fashion markets, they're very important events because they provide, you know, opportunities and experience for all the local people who, you know, who might never get that chance sort of overseas, you know, from designers to the production people to the models to the hair and makeup people. Uh, you know, it, it's a fantastic opportunity to sort of, you know, to, to, to put on a show and sort of learn about it. So, you know, and look, it, it, we, we love to 
you know, knock, Australians love to knock, I mean, you know, whether it's the tall poppy syndrome or the fact that we just don't take ourselves seriously, which I think is, you know, very charming in many ways, you know, I mean, I don't know how many other current affairs programs in the world have sort of two comics on a Thursday night, like the 7.30 report does, but I have to say sort of every year, you know, the Australian media just bashes the event, and uh, I mean, while you, when you say my, my reviews are honest, I think that there's almost like, it's the one time of the year when the Australian fashion press, you know, tries to sort of throw its weight around, and they don't actually seem to do it any other time of the year. Uh, and then they just attack me then and say how crap it is. And, uh, you know, I know it's been very hurtful for the people who run it. And uh, but now it's owned by IMG. Next year it's going to be called the Mercedes-Benz Fashion Week Australia, which is a bit of a mouthful. And um, look, let's see what happens. Well, so in the 16-year history then, has there been one year that stood out to you much more than any other? Or any particular shows that have stood out to you more than any other? Look, there's been some amazing shows at Australian Fashion Week. Uh, one that Colin Dinnigan did, you know, did sort of springs to mind back in way back in 1999 I think it was it quite hasn't shown she's hardly shown there and this was an amazing show that was done with uh, I think with the help of Ka Catherine Martin and Baz Luhrmann at, at Fox Studios it was just beautiful and amazing hair and makeup and just styling I mean it was really this is kind of show that she should, she should be doing it at Par you know, Paris Fashion Week rather than just straight up and down the runway because people would just rave about it um, there's been some other great shows as I said Dion Lee his first show his first solo show was in, a, in an underground car park in King's Cross now there was nothing sort of it was just you know very stark and urban and industrial that was amazing so yeah there's been some good shows and now you've been to so many fashion festivals and fashion weeks you're back in Adelaide this week for the Adelaide Fashion Festival it's your you're, you're a repeat offender it's your second time. How do you measure up the LA Fashion Festival? What's so different about it compared to the others? What do you enjoy about it? Well, look, I think it's I think it's a great little event. And, um, I mean, it's good to see. This is its fourth year, apparently. So I've been to two of them. Uh, again, I think it, I think fashion weeks and fashion festivals are really important, uh, you know, events for, for the local industries and in each of these places because it gives everyone the opportunity to sort of, you know, to learn and sort of, you know, to put on a show and learn about, you know, what's involved in that. So, uh, well, what's different about this one? I mean, I, you know, I I think it probably could do with a lot. It could do with more events. Um, I mean, that's. I, I just think that's just a natural evolution of having, you know, a fashion festival, I mean, and trying to get people involved, and the more publicity there is, the more people will want to be involved, so I think that's really good. Uh, you also have, I believe, perhaps unique in, in the having sort of the emerging designers together with the established designers in the finale that we're going to see tonight. In, you know, in most cases, that's sort of, they're, they're quite separate, so um, good to support both. If there's anything else you'd like to quiz Patty about, you can follow her on Twitter, and just keep checking back at Fashion Square. Red.com.